make some small, make some small changes, tweak it a little bit, and. So I, I think just if, there, if you were to learn anything, I would just tell you, come up with a plan. Realize that no plan is perfect. That you're going to have to spice it up every once in a while. Um, but that's going to be your secret to success is coming up with a plan. And stick with it long enough to make sure that I'll make sure you're going the right way and also make sure you're going the wrong way. I've seen people come up with a pretty sound plan but it's not happening fast enough for their desire, and they're not patient enough, so then they bail on this plan right before they could have gotten better. So kind of stick with your plan a little longer. I'll just stick this video on for the next couple of minutes. To, from compulsory to optionals, and I just found some. This is all guys because these guys, before Michael Maroney, guys are better bolters. Send it to my wife so she knows they actually work while I travel. <laughs> I just put a video like this if anybody sticks their head in and wonders if they should watch, they think we're doing cool stuff. <laughs> subtitle of uh, coming up with a vault plan. But this is developing vault bridge from hand springs to optional vaults. Um, so everybody here been to my lectures before, so I don't need to keep this up there. Yeah, so good. All right. uh, the problem with the handspring vault is the better you get at it, the worse you get it not flipping. Or right, the better you get it not flipping. Okay. Hand springs are they're, they're a great vault. You need to do it at some point, but we spend so much time just doing the handsprint over and over and over again that the kids spend too much time learning how not to flip. <coughs> I, I am a big believer in the compulsory program. I just approach it differently. I, 
know what I want to get out of the program, but I also have a list of other skills that I want to do with it. Uh, the compulsory program is very much like a map. Levels three through seven, it's very much a map. But like any map, it's only going to show certain roads. And the compulsory program is really just showing your major interstates. There's a lot of small roads that are off of there that you need to spend some time on if you're going to have a vaulting plan. If you're going to really explore and know where you want to go with your map. Things that the compulsory program is good for is form and execution. Reinforcement of basic skills. All the compulsory skills are pretty much a good progression. If we did not have, and I've spent a lot of time, this, I've, I've been in Iceland, through Canada, in Italy, lecturing on gymnastics, and they don't have a compulsory program. They don't, they don't do compulsory. What skills would you do if we didn't have a compulsory program? Ask yourself that. For me, when I look at it, I, I wouldn't change too much. You know, I would probably still emphasize a lot of those same skills. Uh, I would change some things a little bit, but really not, not too much. It's, kids have to learn how to compete. And we've all had, because we all talk about it in the bar at night, that great kid that we have back in the gym. Oh, she can do all this stuff. She's just not a good competitor. Well, you get that out in the that's we learned to compete. Something else the compulsory program is good for? My <laughs> <laughs> okay. Reality is your compulsory program subsidizes your optional program. The good and the bad of the hand spring ball. The good part is teaches them how to run. The bad part is non-flipping. Good part is teaches them good board position. The bad part is, and I know this is true. Florida, it's so freaking competitive that it can set you back. You're spending so much time trying to be so perfect that you fail to grow. The good part teaches the kids how to block, it teaches kids how to land. You need to have a plan. Here are some questions that you need to answer. What drills and when? This goes back to if I if we didn't have a compulsory program, what drills would you want to have and when would you want to implement them? What drills to continue? So from your level three handstand flat back to level four where they're going over the table, are there any drills you want to carry on from level to level? When do you want to introduce a new entry ball? specifically a uh, ground option. How much time are you going to spend on the handspring or other balls? How will that, how will that do that? How will that affect their score? These are all really important things. This, we're, we're gonna specifically go towards as we get into it, Almost all of my drills are going to be based around your channels. I feel that um, if I have a kid who, for whatever reason, can't your chenko <coughs> because they're terrified of going backwards or whatever, you know, if they're terrified of going backwards and they can't your chenko, doing the drills, it's at least help them have a better round off back hand spring that they're going to use on the other hand. So there's really not a lot of downside. My philosophy at my gym, competition is good. You need to know how to win, and you need to know how to lose. You need to have the skills for that level before I call you that level. It's none of these level level five, except they don't have my fly. You need to have those skills. So we're working skills that are a year to two years down the road while you're working that level. Your routine skills, no matter what level you are,
should not be difficult. And the team skills can be that. Why they should be. You're either getting better or worse. Gymnastics and your gymnastics business, it's dynamic. There's no such thing as staying where you're at. If you have a gymnast who goes in and does a certain ball one year and wins national championships, and in the next 12 months makes no improvement, and does the exact same ball, she's probably now in the top five, but she's not going to win because other people have gotten better. So you're either getting better or you're getting worse. No such thing as you can come in. No such thing as staying where they're at. In my gym, you have to be very clear with our requirements. I don't want any questions. So all of my requirements on each event are written down. Where's the best place to write them down? Where the kids are going to see them. And you're going to post them. So where should you post your ball requirements? Not next to ball. They never see that crowd. Down the other end of the runway where they stand the top. Okay? On their, they're down there talking. So I have the requirements right there. Right? So they can see. You know what's been good about having all my requirements? No phone calls from the parents. How come my daughter's not moving up? Because she knows the requirements. I don't have this, Mom. This is a requirement. I don't get to move up until I get this. If the kid understands it, very black and white. So level four, you need to have a handspring ball. Level three, you need to have a pulse. You should be able to walk. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to walk fast. Okay, so we'll get you know. I understand. Okay, level five, mm -hmm. these are my requirements. You need to be able to do a handspring over the ball table. So still a compulsory ball here. Okay, but I want it to be hard. I want them to do it to stand on top of two eight-inch mats. So now I'm asking more. And my requirements on each event are like this. My requirements on bars are, are the same. Here are the good compulsory routines, but I also expect this. Level six, handspring over the table to stand up on the fat mat. They should be able to do a soup or eat or check it out. These are my requirements for level six. Level seven, they need to learn a flipping ball at level seven. This is a blank slide. There we go. Um, level eight, they're competing their, their, their uh, flipping ball. My feeling is that if you start on level three in my gym, I can get you to level seven. I know that if with a minimal amount of work, I can get you to level seven. Level eight starts kind of real gymnastics. Right? I need them to have a flipping ball. This is going to cut a lot of kids off. I need you to be able to do a, a pull on the floor. You need to have, a, you need to be swinging multiple giants and have a toe on hands with a foot at least and not bars. So in my gym, I can get you to level seven. Level eight, nine, and ten, good. Yeah. So level nine, you, you need to have the, those. Nine, seven, ten, oh, start down. So, like a layout your chain for a layout suit, okay, which is nine, seven, ten, oh, at level nine. Okay, you need to be able to do that. Level ten, you need to have a ten, oh, start value ball. Okay. You wouldn't go and compete an athlete, or you shouldn't go and compete an athlete that's not coming from a ten, oh, on another event, but it seems like coaches accept that on ball. Well, we've got a ten, oh, on floor, we've got a ten, oh, on beam, we've got a ten, oh, on bars. We got a 9.7 or 9.5 on ball. What if you're starting with a ball? Doesn't make, that doesn't make sense to me. If you're a host gymnast or free elite, you must have a last example, period, end of story. It's just what it is. Does anybody have any questions on my requirements? Pretty easy. Okay. This is my dream compulsory program. If anybody asks me, and they're never going to ask me, so I'll tell you. Okay? <laughs> Level three, that's what they do now. Handspring, flat back. Okay? Level four, handspring over the table to flat back. To land, to land up on a, a mat eight inches higher than the table. They're landing on their back like this. 
The reason I like that is because I think you've got some darn little kids that show a lot of potential, but because they're going up and all the way over, we're forcing them into some bad body positions. Okay? You see the kid, they may, like, just because they weigh 35 pounds, they can't physically bounce off the board hard enough, so you see them running really fast, which you want to encourage, and then they hit the board as hard as they possibly can, and then everything else is kind of this bushy mess because they're just trying to get over the table. This could be a really talented kid who kicks butt on bars, who's beautiful on beat, but just because of her size, is going to struggle on golf. Why should we make that kid struggle? Why should we hurt her body shape? I don't So, remember what we said about me? I'm doing awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. You get the bonus right there. Okay. So, I want this game to spring over the ball table to land flat on their back without breaking body shape. Level five, handspring ball. This is, now they're learning how to land. <clears throat> Level six should be a vault timer to stack maps. Okay? Whether it's uh, handspring front, I don't handspring front, suit for your check okay? That That should be their compulsory vault. Any questions on that? Anybody understand why I have those? My 10 commandments for vault. Okay? Have a plan. You must teach kids how to run. We didn't used to have to teach kids how to run because they used to actually be able to play on a playground and run on a playground, <laughs> and now they don't. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Kids come in, I'm like, you know, I look at these kids and they look like I should check them for medic alert bracelets when they come down the ball front way. Teach kids how to run. I'm sorry that I didn't take that my politically correct pill this evening. Okay? <laughs> teach your body positions and relate it to their fault. We spend a lot of time putting the kids in good body positions. But we never tell them why. We never tell them what it's for. So teach the body position related to their ball. They need to learn how to bounce on the board. Kids can jump, but they don't understand the difference between jumping and bouncing. So teach the kids how to bounce. Teach the kids how to land. They need to land a lot of things. If they understand what the end feels like, whether the end is the ending of a Yuchenko or the ending of just a handspring, Falling flat on their back. Teach them about the <coughs> They'll have less fear going throughout. Teach them how to fall because it's going to happen. Lay the base early for future faults. Teach them how to flip other places. Probably a little easier for them to do their first double back on the, you know, in a bungee belt over your trampoline. Okay. But a Sugahara or your Chenko, it's two flips. Going backwards. Teach them how to flip in other places. Be clear and quick with your corrections. If you can't give a kid a correction in five seconds, you lost that guy. Be clear with it. Um, was that a competition was just actually happened to be at my gym? And I was over there, you know, I, I was playing meat jar, so I was over there talking to the judges, asking, hey, do you need water? Do you need anything? And I listened, there were these Two guys standing in front of the ball table, and one coach standing behind. They weren't all spotted. It was just a handspring ball. They were just kind of there. But they're all from the one again. This little kid runs down, hits the board, does a handspring ball. It's not bad. Three coaches gave her a correction before she went back. This kid was not going to make any of those corrections. One coach said, run faster. The other one said, make sure you push harder. And the third coach said, stick your landing. These are three things. This seven-year-old is going to make one correction to you. That's a great kid. So give the kid one correction. That's about what most kids can take. Too many corrections <laughs> overload. They're not going to remember it. And at the end, let them play. Kids will teach you some things. Okay. So your plan, like a little graph in front write down your plan. It needs to be written down. Flexible. Every kid, every group is going to be a little bit different. What works with your group of level fives that are starting to learn their optimal balls today, your next generation of kids might be different. They might run a lot faster. They might have faster flop to their shoulders. There's going to be differences. What's your goal? Where do you want this gymnast to be in 
when this competition season starts in September? Where do you want them to be a year from now, next June? Where do you want this kid to be? Where do you want this kid to be when they're 13 years old or 15 years old when they're trying to be recruited by college? You need to have a plan for all of these things. Get other coaches involved. I was sitting here trying to, I took this from Morgan, and it was pretty fast. You would think that she would be a pretty good Lichenko coach. She had the right body, she had a nice double pipe on the floor. So I'm working with her Lichenko, and it just wasn't clicking. And Corey, one of my other coaches, came up, and she goes, you know something, she's an exceptional front talk. And she's got a great front talk on me, and she never misses. Why don't you have her hand press? And I'm like, all right. Here, she come to her first one, she's doing hands press. We haven't gone forwards over the table since she was like level six. She's done a pipe to Chanko at level eight. And she does this handspring. And just kills it. Goes like all the way up there. I'm like, why don't you try to go to the pit? Just try to flip out of it. And she does this just really technically simple thing. Handspring front. Because she was a natural pumper. Not because I helped her. I did everything I could to not help her by having her do it to wrong ball. But this other coach got involved and had great insight. I don't get to see. I think that's how much you get, which makes sense. So have other kids involved in your playing. Have drills at each level, not just skills. What drills do we want kids to do at level six? What drills do we want them to do at level seven? This way you're always working what you have down the road. These are what we're working for next year. This is what we're working for the year after. Instead of looking at it as level three, level four, level five, I decided if I had my ideal gymnast, I was going to do this by age group. I was going to divide it up by age. And so this is not your average kid. This is, and I'll use the term Maddie, because when you see a picture of her, you'll understand. This is what I want Maddie doing. This little girl, girl Maddie. Okay? As a six to eight year old, my goals for her are to develop a steady run. Okay? Have an excellent handspring to stack mats with or without the cable. Because again, I don't want it to have a wicked body shape. Not wicked, you know, Boston when it's coming up. Okay? I don't want this really wild body position. I want a nice tight body. Okay? The run must accelerate up to the hamstring, not just to run along the floor. Kids run really fast, they <coughs> put the board there and they change it. I want correct body position with an underswing. And I'm not a big, it doesn't have to be a big swing, I just want their arms moving from down to up. Maintain straight body throughout. So when Maddie gets the 8 to 10, I want her to keep working increased speed and power. Okay? I want to introduce, in that age grade, I want to introduce roundup entry vaults to her. I want her starting to learn a flipping vault. We're going to do lots of tramp drills to increase her spatial awareness. All these things are working for long-term gymnastics. Maddie's 10 to 12, I want her to complete her flipping vault, and she should be competing at, at this point. We're going to start developing a second family of vaults, because Maddie's got these legs. She could be a vault world champion, but she's going to need two vaults to do it. She should be able to flip at your chain. 12 to 14, as vaults become ready to compete, we refine things. Adding twists. We're doing tramp, tumble track on a light day. She should have two balls, but she should be able to compete. 14 plus, she's either going to have two balls, where I know that we're working towards maybe an individual event world champion, or we've gone back and said, you know what, this isn't working, we're just going to stick with it. Aminar, you've got, a, you've got a two and a half, you've got a triple 12, we're good working on everything else because you're still that good. So at some point, you build a program up, and at some point you go, this is or is not going to happen at this age. So I have a plan for Maddie. Maddie's seven years old. So I have a plan for her half the lifespan away. Would be her lifespan. Twice her age. That would be good. Her lifespan. Okay. Level one now we're back to your realistic tips. Let the kids run. Teach them to bounce versus jump. <coughs> do 
all their body shape. It's talking pipe, layout, and a lot of hand work. Okay? So this is actually, this is Maddie's, and when you see her run, you'll know what I mean. That's a horrible handspring flat back. But is that a good run? I mean, she tears down that runway. You're pretty good for a little white kid. <laughs> but, but that's what I want. I, I want to see that kid run like that. So will she get better and control that hand sprint ball? Sure she will. I don't want her to control right now. I just want her to run. Can you go back to that first slide before that? Yeah. My slides should all be up on my website by next week. Um, the, the videos won't be, but the slides will be. Yeah. I think this is just running though. I don't know why this isn't coming. Oh, speed training. Something we do at my gym. We don't do it often. Next one's more for your channels. It's a quick, it's a quick video, so if you you can play it more than once, I will. But they um, handstand snap up onto a board and rebound back to a mat. Here's all our body shape things. Chin up, and then I want to see your body move through the hollow. Do the same thing on your stomach. Now we'll take it and I put it up on a mat that makes her reach further. And you see how she's using just the upper part of the body. Perfect drill for your chin. But have them work, have them be able to isolate parts of the body. The whole body doesn't work all at once, they have to work parts as well. The next video is uh, a, a pretty good drill for front hand springs. It, it shows using the wedge mat, and I'll show it a couple times because it is a quick video. So she'll do a heel drive off of the piece of trapezoid. And, and her arms will shoot out like a front handspring. So her arms shoot out and her feet tip over. Uh, this young lady, Maddie, has real shoulder pain. Mm -hmm. Be nice, it is my daughter. <laughs> I mean, this is so old. My daughter is now 19. I know, you don't look old enough to have a 19 year old. No, you should say that. <laughs> uh, level four, handspring to flat back. Um, Obviously, this should be level three. Uh, my numbers are just wrong because I haven't updated the slides in a while. Spotted front layout. Handspring over fat mat, so they're going over the fat mat. Handspring over the table to a fat mat. Front tuck off board, up to eight inch mat. Cartwheel a round off onto a carpet square. Round off onto a board, rebound. Round off over, over a mat. So 
they're going over it to snap up their round up more. Front handspring off the board for repulsion. My level fours, their warm up, they come over and the very first thing they do is they do three sprints. They just sprint three times. I keep the board in, they run as fast as they can, run right off the board, right up onto the back. Then they do three jump ups, and I want to see it, sometimes I'll time it, but I want to see their run be the same. So they run, bounce, jump up to the back. Then they do three front layouts, and I spot those. And the front layouts are to their feet. I want them to rotate all the way over. That's what they do every day. Our handspring drills. Bounce on the board front and back. You saw what that little drill did. Okay. Run and rebound onto a board. Through some dive rolls. Kick the handstand flat back, because sometimes as they start to tip over, they start biking. Front and back limbers. Oh, it, I, I just like that for some of them. I think a uh, mistake kids make is they start pulling their head down. Now, Newton's Law will tell you that every action is going to have an equal and opposite reaction. If they pull their head down, their butt's going to stick out. So you need to have neutral head position. Their eyes need to be locked on their hands through a handstand flat back or through a hand screw. We'll do cartwheels on a line. So we'll start working for a nice straight cartwheel for a round off. Round offs on, push up bounces, so they start to develop some shoulder strength. Handstand shrugs. We'll do the level, this should be level three. Level three ball, and now I'll just keep increasing the height of the mat. Right? We all have problems with our kids because they lean in, right? They hit the board and, and they're leaning in, or am I the only one that has that problem? <laughs> no. Okay, so you know what you do? Put the mats really high. They can't lean in, they'll hit their head off. It's a mat. I wouldn't do it while you do it with the table. But they learn. Usually they hit their head once, and you won't do it again. Okay? But so, so stack the mats high. It'll get them to stand up straight on the board. Some drills that we do, just rebound up. I like this because it's bouncy. Bounce, 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 bounce up. Hands stand, and we just forward roll. If they get better, they'll front, they'll front. Front hand spring, oh, this is jump off, jump off. I think that over do front hand springs over and front tucks over. Starting to okay, we're going to drive this one. I'll push my hands over. Over. Keep the round up a little bit. Well, I should do another one. Swing on parallel bars. Every time they see their feet swing up behind them, that's the heel drive that they want in front tumbling. And it's what drills them here. And it's really not so much heel drive as it is, it, it's driving through the whole backs of their legs. I like this because it, it, they have to stay tight. They have to drive their whole body up behind them straight, and I don't have to spot. <coughs> My level five, handspring. Or, so this is level four. Level four, handspring over the ball table. Handspring pop to handstand over the ball table. So the, the pop land in a handstand on another set of mats. So it's going to get off by vertical. Handspring over ball table to stack mat. At level five and six, I am oh, level five. So it's level four. At level four and five, okay, I'm happy to take landing reductions. I want to take. I want these kids to be hit. I want it to be huge. Right? And, and I really think it, it, if they do a bigger vault at level four and five now and take two steps on it, providing they're doing it, they're taking their steps and it's a good ball. It's not really archy. Okay? That long term is going to be better for me. We'll start doing quarter-ons and stack mats. I don't 
don't do that so much anymore because I really just go right to your tangents. You know, with all of them. Round off over panel maps, and then we'll do some soup kind of afterwards to make you start with fun. Here's a good, this next video is a good drill we do for blocking. She's doing that for like three or four running steps. She's got a good tight body. She has good hips on the board. That's going to be your long-term successful golf or a tumbler. So I'm working kind of two things here. Um, here we are. We'll do a front tuck over. Notice that there's a mat against the wall here now because I didn't the first kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want them, I want it to look as much the same as I can. I want it to run towards the ball table. I want them to use the hip pad forward. How high is that table? Um, I would say it's probably on two, but then I've got an old eight inch mat, which is probably down to like six and a half inches over it. Uh, going uphill. I'll show you something here. We go up and we always fall to our backs out of it. All of our drills are about having rotation at the end. Um, is anybody at my ju the judging, golf judging thing that I did before? Okay, so there's one person who's kind of on to you. This is, I don't regret this far. Okay, we'll see. Sydney. Um, if, on, on her ball, if Sydney throws her head back, what way does her body move? Forward. <coughs> so we know that that didn't work. So as coaches, we're always telling the kids to tuck their head, keep their head down. But that didn't work. Okay? So what I want Sydney to do, all she has to do is to tuck her chin in. How hard did I push on you to get you to tip over backwards? Like, hardly at all. So if your gymnast comes up on her ball, and all she, she gets a good block, and all she does is tuck her chin in. Here, she's going <laughs> backwards. And that's, and that's what you want. Oh, I'll just show another drill while I have you. Okay. So what they can do, and I'll make them stand, because this will be weird because they're really behind me. But I'll stand there, and I'll say, okay, so you push your head into the wall. Just her head. And that's what I want to see. I want to see, like, the thing in the neck. And, and then I'll have her turn around, face wall, and now do the same thing to pull your chin back. If she does the same thing, okay, she's going to fall backwards. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, so that's what you want. So on these drills, and you'll see them when we introduce your Chenko drills as well, is they'll land up on the mat, and then I want to see them tuck their chin. And I call it soldier chin. I don't know what else to call it. But I want to, I want to see them pull their head in for that. And that will get them to flip. A drill, if you have kids that are working suits, and I don't so much anymore, if you go to your Chancos, is they'll try to do that with a quarter turn. The next video kind of got cut off. You can't really see her whole body. But what she's doing is she's doing knee drop on trampoline to a front handspring, or it's on a tumble track, actually. Or she'll do knee drop to a round off. When she does the knee drop, your, your developmental kids, realistically, are just going to do their knee drop, and you're going to want to have their arms down as they do their knee drop. So they swing their arms out into the front handspring, or down and swing into the quarter on for, for a suit. Um, the kid that I have, she'll, she'll actually do a little arm circle. Going backwards, back handspring, and try to rebound for it. Pull the string. You guys want me to do that again? Or did I do it again? Yeah, so just one more. Thank <laughs> you. 
I, I like her to go to handstand. You know, so, so she's learning how to bounce and control her body, snapping up and not clenching, not clenching up. So she shouldn't. This isn't good. I just didn't cut it out. Okay. I only show you my good kids. I'm not going to show you the crappy ones that look like that. Okay. So she should go back handspring and try to bounce up to a handstand, and then and then fall. But she snapped through. Is that is that a max sitting on Um. It, it it's uh. It's my old resi kit that I now use behind the, it, it, that was, yeah, it, it's an old, it, it's about two and a half feet high, but it's about eight, about eight inches higher than the tumble trap. You know, we're, we're like quarters because we never throw any mats out. We always like, no, oh, no, don't throw it out. I can always find another use for it. So, see you all going over the mat. Ah, all right. So here we're getting into your Chanko stuff. What this is right here, um, I'm very big on spatial things. So I try to keep things as as alike as I can. So this is a wedge mat folded up, our golf table trainer, and then uh, the fat mat back here. And you'll see a variety of things. She's just going to do a back hand spring over. When she falls backwards, you're going to see her chin up and be in that position that Sydney helped me. Learning layout. Now, in the next video, you'll see that I've unfolded it and now she round off the round off back to this thing. So it's the same. We're keeping the space the same. Um, this is really only about four steps long, it's all she gets. When I when I can, if I can set this up during morning workout or sometimes Saturday afternoon, I don't have a lot of other things in the gym, they'll go a lot further and I'll have new kids actually flip their Yurchenko off of the ball table training this way. The, the run, because the, they'll be able to do a full run into this. Teaching kids how to land, forward and backward rolls off of a block. Um, and she'll go forward, go forward, turn. I just did this a different one. That was from a different lecture. Um, a great thing to teach kids how to go, how to flip forward, is over at bars, and just have a front hip circle. Because they have to understand how their heels drop. So now this is not level six and five, but they do the compulsory ball. But I want it up to max, so they have to increase their pop. Continue development of different entry balls. Um, what's this called? Reach back up and we're on the original one. Handstand rebounds. Our record in our gym is 150 in a row, and I stopped her at 150. I thought that was enough. But we just, you know, we make everything a contest. Because contests are fun, kids like them. They're motivated by them. A drill that we do, let me stop it for a second. A drill that we do, um, I think this is for your checklist. I don't have my notes. Nope, it's not. It's front hand <laughs> All right, so just front hand spring off of, uh, that's a, off of the tumble track air ramp. But it can be off the board or whatever. But we're going uphill. Uh, now we'll do uh, keep the round up, back layout up, back up off. So it's really like this. They're learning how to flip off the board. I'll do that one more time. Nice good safety. Yeah, she's a little kid, um, but I, I like that. Uh, I, I will talk about if I, I try to be very black and white in my gym. If you wear, if when you're a level five and you have your flyer, okay, you can you get your first pair of grips. Okay, as soon as you get your fly away, you can get grips. That's my rule. Okay. As soon as you work your chenkos must wear wrist supports, whether they're the Lions Plus Tiger Cards or whatever the heck they're called. Um, and they must be tan, I feel silly always. Just, just, just tan, okay? We, you, 
must wear those. I just think that from a you know, 70 foot run to hit an inch, an inch and a half of foam, it, that's, that's awful hard on a developing rim. Road plates are still wide open. We want to protect our athletes. So those are my rules. If you, if you push your Yurchenko, which I usually make them get serious at at level five, six, you wear your Tiger Paws or Lion's Paws, whatever you want to call them. You only wear them when we train that ball. You don't have to wear them on everything, but, that, but that's my rule. Okay. I know, like I see level threes out there, and they want them, but that's just because girls like accessories. <laughs> oh, come on. You can tell me that's not true? They said, they all like that. A Joe do for her hurdle. Watch where her arms swing to in her hurdle. That was a little high. I didn't like that. So we'll watch this next one. There you go. Okay. See how her arms stay relatively low. It's very important. Your hurdle is meant to propel you forward. Right? It, you're running, and then you hurdle to go forward. If I was on ice <coughs> and I swung my arms this far, my body would scoot forward, right? If I did this with my arms, what would I do? Well, I'd fall on my back. So, so these kids come down and they hurdle. Why did I just do a right turn? <laughs> okay. So these kids come down and they hurdle and their arms come up this far. Which way is she going? She's slowing down. You can't afford to slow down. So their hands should stop at about their chin in a good hurdle for a round. Okay. It is, even if you watch enough, sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll try to stop here and they'll follow through. That's okay. But don't tell your kids to swing their arms all the way up here because it makes them go in the wrong direction. So it'll slow them down. Oh, we saw that before already. See, handspring girls, handspring set up. Drill on trampoline. Um, so this is the air pit from Crumble Track for the EWS. And this is sideways over my trampoline, just so you know what they're going over. I try to make everything fun. Over it, and go over it backwards too. Oh, some exercises, sit ups. Now, watch how Maddie rolls out of this next one. If you want to see the heels drive all the way over the top and they roll, and then she should roll out in a tight up. That's what you want to see with that. I'd actually like this, but it didn't, for whatever reason, when I updated to, to the, the newer software, my, some of my videos didn't come through. She has a rolled up washcloth, and she has <coughs> one between her knees, and she has to hold one between each shoulder. And what she's doing is back handspring to handstand up the wedge mat. Okay? And for your chenkos, it's very important. Most kids make the mistake in your chenko in that they snap their feet too far in their back handspring, so they snap down. This makes them snap up and they have to stop. Um, she was having a little bit of a problem and her legs kept coming apart, therefore she got the extra washcloth between her knees. But the ones between her ears and shoulders is to keep this thing open. Okay? You don't want to, I don't want to see this. She needs to be open, she reaches back, and um, so she'll stop in a handstand. Going on to your chenkos, to start with ground up on the board, rebound. And then we'll go, we'll do the same thing kind of over the ball table. Um, this is one of my favorite 
inbound drills for your chin, for the, um, or the top drills for your shoulder. There are there are two vaulting boards here, and then there's a pale mat on top, and there's a matted pin. So when she does her back handspring, this whole thing compresses. So it forces Melissa to get a really good pop for your shoulder. Know what direction they twist, I have them jump turn, quarter turn in the direction that they twist. Well, I'll show you what drives me crazy about this. Look at the girl on the background. She is so bad on handspring and <laughs> handstand push ups that I want to go to the screen and yell at her. Watch his handstand push up in the back. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to my gym. <laughs> Too hot. It's like terrible. So when we twist, we learn in quarter increments. So I try to follow the same path here. Uh, Melissa did a show me back and double pull. Whenever I had her try to twist more than a double pull, she tended to rush it and start twisting on the ball table. Um, but if, if your ball back to double pull, you know. So there you can kind of see how the boards are. Okay. So there's a board here, and the other one just kind of rides up a little bit. Now this mat's the same height. Again, going back to those same body shapes, we're always reinforcing doing the same, same body shapes that they've learned earlier. Four turns, so that's the same. Uh, we'll do six, seven balls, handspring. I make sure every kid knows how to do a handspring ball. I know that's contrary to everything else I've been saying, but I've had level eights that have gone in and tweaked their ankle doing a floor routine. Okay? And still had to go to ball because we didn't have a ball back. You know? A handspring pull, it's not going to keep you competitive at level eight balls, but it will keep you competitive in the all around a lot more than just throwing a handspring because you tweaked your ankle. After that, you have to flip. You're not competitive. You're not getting it. It's always good to have that one little break. We do some more rebounding drills that we do. There's only like two springs in that board. All the big rest are ready. A couple ball timers. That's Doug. This is your Chenko drill. Um, so we're working rebounding off of our Just find this fun. They like doing it, so I get a lot of turns because they're really starting to figure out where things are. Uh, seat drop back handsprings. I'm getting too close to the trampoline. Just on there, so you can let your kids play on. Typically, one of my ball stations on the way back. You'll see drop back handspring, go lay out to your stomach. So, we have a couple of ball times. The first one, the handspring front, you see the heel drive that we wanted. And this is a pretty big high your chin goes on it. She gets off the table in a hurry. She's a tall kid. Um, so, 
was really, like, that she got to the layout ball, I was like, that that was like the Olympics for her. But she, she just a tall, tall thing. Some other things you can do on tumble tracks is kind of going round up flip flop over the snap. Or not, I don't know where I'm Round up, layout up, layout pull off. Um, I showed this in my bar, but it's good to get to kids how to reach back for your fingers. Now, is they're starting to learn how to flip, I, I spot the kids on ball. I don't have a big loose foam pit. I have a loose foam pit at the end of my tumble track or switch it. I don't have resi at the end of ball. So I have to spot, but I want the kids to develop as much as they can without me spotting. So here's the drill that I work. So we'll go up to the fat mat sideways, flip off, and we'll do the same thing. This is a kid doing soup, but you can do it for your Chenko or They're learning how to flip. You're not spotting and safe. You don't even need a red to do it. You can do that on hard landing. Um, sure. You want to plot out your plan. So every one of these drills, I have a plan that this is what level they're going to be doing these drills at. So I don't get the kid that's just through level seven and all of a sudden I have to teach her a suit or a Yurchenko. I want to get this kid to level seven and we're like, all right, now today <laughs> we're going to do three handsprings and five Yurchenkos, however it is. Um, Typically, level six and seven in my gym are, we, we spend half the time on their current ball, their handspring ball that they need for competition, and half the time on their long-term ball. Just so you know what we do. So if it's five handsprings, it's five year change, whatever it is. Does anybody have any questions on anything? Yes, sir. So should you play with all the balls to see what your kid would do better? You're going to a little bit just to alleviate boredom because that kid might surprise you. That kid with the big handspring timer and handspring front, that was the one that I would beat my head against because she's a good tumbler. So everything would tell you, yeah, yeah, she should be a good Yurchenko person. In the end, I couldn't get her to do a layout, but I got to do a handspring fight. So most of the kids you're going to know. You have a good front tumbler, she's pretty fast, she's a little bit squirrely going backwards, you're going to stick with it forward. If you have somebody, everybody else, your chain goes. I, I honestly, I, I think you're going to see fewer. That's hardly any use for seats anymore. Yes. Uh, uh, we is I, I literally stood behind them and, and pushed them forward so they understood not hard you know and I'm not like knocking them to the ground but so they would understand that it has to propel that it has to propel forward another thing that I've done is that single leg sprint so they run down on, let's say I'm a left leg hurdle so this is my last step so they're gonna go left leg left leg left leg to the board because they can't really go high off of one leg and then you go right leg, right legs, right legs, left to the board. So you just you eliminate both feet. So so it forces them to push, and they have to push forward because they're only coming off of that one foot. So when you're pushing them, you're pushing on both legs. No steps. Well, like she's in a lunge. Okay. <laughs> really fun. Pick up your flip flops so you don't eat it on the floor. Okay, I just need more. And so let's say you land there on both feet. <laughs> So they just feel that it needs to go forward. Your that, that muscle memory. Oh, okay. I understand what I'm supposed to feel. But then, as far as a drill, single leg run, jump to the board. Other leg run, 
one step go to the board. So you're eliminating too much speed, but they're understanding that it has to be close to them and they can't do it. Um, and it could be uh, if, that she feels she has to stop. Maybe just have her bounce on the board. Like turn it just bounces and she understands the difference between bouncing and jumping. Questions? Yes. Can you share the front run? That's not a great front front, but it's a good drill for yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. She was uh, she was kept hurling too close, and I just kind of got lazy and stopped moving it. She said, oh, that really went to me. She said, that really helped me. So now I have to put a tape line there. Right. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you all very much. Thank you. Ooh, 12%. I gotta stop recording. Just <laughs> So even though you can't say anything, it's still recording.